I'm here to explain infrared spectroscopy to incoming organic chemistry students. Basically, infrared spectrometry is used, or spectroscopy, excuse me, is used to identify structures or molecules. So, for example, we have ethanol drawn here. What would happen is the IR spec would fire massive amounts of infrared light at the molecule. These bonds here, well, actually all the bonds really, are going to vibrate, stretch, bend, just absorb a lot of energy and start shaking like crazy. The IR spectrometer uses a diamond to capture these bends, shakes, stretches, the whole nine yards, and records it in the spectrum form. So when you go to run a molecule like this on the IR, you start with a table that's drawn here with expected stretches. You have an sp3 carbon stretch from both carbons on the molecule. You have an OH stretch, obviously, because it's an alcohol. And you would have a carbon-oxygen stretch at the carbon-oxygen bonding site. And these are the expected um, vibrations at those bonds. So then you can get an idea of relatively what your IR spectrum will look like. Your graph will come out like this, relative intensity on the y-axis, and wave number in inverted centimeters, because it's a wavelength, on the x-axis. To use the IR machine, first you want to open the program. It's OMNIC. Uh, exit out of the help, and then press OK on that right there. We'll enlarge it to get a better view. Now, before you collect anything, you want to make sure that your colleagues have cleaned off the apparatus correctly. So we'll take a little bit of ethanol, clean chem wipe, and just give that a nice wipe down. Right on the bottom on the diamond surface and on the top hammer. Just make sure that there's nothing there. All right. Now, first thing we'll do is collect the background. Click on collect background and then it says please prepare, we're okay. And then start collection. The machine's gonna run 32 iterations collecting the background uh, to make sure that it's not in with your sample. Once it stops, it's going to ask if you want to add the spectra to the window. You do not want to add the background spectra to the window, so click no. All right, now that we're ready for the sample, we're going to place a little bit of sample on the diamond on the diamond surface right there. So we're going to we're going to use ethanol, ethanol alcohol as our sample. So I'm just going to squirt it right on there. And then we're going to lower the hammer onto the diamond, ensuring that it's not too tight. Once it, once it gives a little bit of resistance, you want to stop. You don't want to damage the tip. All right, now we're ready to collect samples. So we're going to collect our sample right there. Enter the spectrum. That's fine. If you want to change the title, you may. Sample is prepared. OK. And then you start collection. And it'll run through another 32 iteration. Now it's done running the 32 iterations. Data collection is stopped. We do want to add this to the window, so you click yes. Yes, it is added to the window. So there is your spectra of the product that you have sampled. Now that we have our spectrum, we want to label peaks that we uh, suspect to be in our final compound. We brought a. We always bring a list with expected absorption values for specific functional groups that we expect to see. So first we want to go down to this little T right here, the annotation tool. Click on that. It's going to give you the T right there. And now you'll be able to label the peaks. So this is our OH stretch right here. It's very characteristic. Draw it down. You'll see the, see the value, the actual value for it, the uh, measured value. And then you just press enter and it'll stay. And you do the same thing for every peak that you intend to label. And now, what you want to do is you want to save it, file save as, make sure you save it on your jump drive, and then print a copy for your lab report.